Hello once again, my friends. I am Marksman, and today I'm gonna be looking at a new game that's gonna come out uh, come out in in a decent amount of time. I'm not exactly sure the exact time in which the the game is gonna come out. I know I haven't done any Marksman spots or anything in a, quite a while. I've been really busy, you know. I got some stuff to do, but this game, I, I wanted to talk about it, and for multiple different reasons. One being that I've been talking to the developer a little bit over email seems like a nice guy and I want to kind of talk about game design in general and uh, how this game either sets itself apart or does something right or maybe it doesn't do something right sorry I'm gonna quickly adjust the volume a little bit all right there we go perfect so this game is called trial by Viking by last life games it is currently on Kickstarter as well as Steam Greenlight and if you like what you see of course you can go ahead and uh, go ahead and search it up I'll hopefully remember to put the things in the description uh, the game has some dialogue here pretty cool uh, the, the character models are pretty decent as as I can see so far oh it's a dragon and then that guy's like oh no he falls off the edge and then dope Viking guy is just like yo I'm gonna go fight the dragon so he does and this is the opening cutscene to their trailer as well, or to, to Dustin's trailer. That always struck me as a little strange, how he kind of clipped through the dragon's neck. But you know what? That's fine. And then Mr. Uh, this guy, he's all like, oh, Odin is like, yo, dude, you gotta do stuff for me. And then, yeah. Alright, we'll just skip it. You get the point. Kind of interesting. And then Loki is a bad guy and stuff, and he's super evil and shit. And now we have to go fight him. And uh, we have to go to a different realm where Odin does not have as much strength. So, oh, well, we can't press start to skip. Alright, well, skipping doesn't work. That's something to note as well. Granted, the cutscene isn't that long, but... Also, they do a pretty good job with the whole poetic thing. They do. They have a lot of nice little... Little stanzas, nice lines in there from time to time. Yeah, I'm aware. So it does start you off as game is slightly Metroidvania, if I'm not mistaken. So you don't normally begin with the ability to to double jump. You don't normally get, start with the ability to to wall climb, etc., etc., etc. But here we have those abilities and and such. So in the the, the point is we have to collect all the sunstones. Um. And we have a couple tools to do that. So I have my axe. Generally, you know, Vikings use axes. Of course, I prefer swords, but that's just how that's how it is when you have the, the soul of a person who loves swords. Oh, there's a lady running around over there. I don't know what her deal is. I just stepped on the guy's head and then murdered his face. Um, now, one thing that I actually can take credit for is metal potion. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Sure. Um... One thing that I can take credit for is are the ragdoll physics in this game. So if you're like, oh man, it looks nice. Yeah, damn straight it does. <laughs> Not to be egotistical, but I actually do think the ragdoll physics add a very nice effect. Uh, previously, I'm sorry if it's a little choppy, I don't know what that's all about. But uh, previously, there was some, he in the trailer, if you see the trailer possibly on Greenlight or the Kickstarter, um, you actually see when the enemies die, they don't necessarily just, they, they don't ragdoll like, like they do currently. They, they kind of just have their own little animation cycle. To me, that always looked a little choppy, and I didn't really like the way that looks in really any game. Um, I much prefer the ragdoll thing. It makes the kill more satisfying. It makes really just everything a lot better. That guy fell. What a nerd. Ow. Ow. You dick. Yeah, I really like the way it looks when they when they ragdoll, because you get a much better sense of, like, I just, you know, murdered an orc, and he's not stuck to the ground in a weird way. Like, my axe actually is powerful, and he drops to the ground and, and has an impact. And that, that's just that's just nice in general, I, I feel. So we did basically the little tutorial level, or what I'm assuming is a tutorial level. And now we get to do, we get to pick what level we want to do. And um, this is the demo, by the way, so this is not the full game. I would like to see where this game goes. 
and how it would look in the final product, but it is currently not the final product. So I obviously use the Flame Axe. You probably only start off with the Force Axe, Boomerang, Agile Boots, or whatever. Or probably just the Axe. I'm actually not sure, but... It would be interesting to see where you start off in this game, because there's some other cool stuff that you can unlock later on, but I can't really see what any of them do. Except for the Darkness Axe, and then the Frost Axe. That's pretty cool. And the Grappling Hook seems interesting as well. Life Steel seems helpful, as you will probably soon see. I don't know what the Energy Belt does, but I want to see what it does. So let's equip some bombs, and there we go. Ah, <sighs> alright, well... What you see, what you've seen so far is pretty close to what you're going to get. Also, that bear guy we talked to gave us a spirit roll, which allows us to do that. I don't know what's going on with my controls. Feel feel a little strange at the moment, but that might be my end, or the fact that I'm recording. But uh, there's some light puzzle solving elements. you got to turn these gears to open up the one at the bottom. Now, when I first saw the trailer, there was some crazy stuff going on. And, ooh, hell, oh, alright, well, I didn't want to go back that way, don't worry about that. Ooh, are you going to get hit by that? Oh, it does have a radius, that's actually really cool, I didn't expect that. Yeah, that nerd is dead, you can't attack this thing, which, that just annoyed me, because I was like, I want to kill that thing so badly, because it's being a dick, you know, just keep shooting you all the time, you can't do anything about it. You think I care about your garbage oh Jesus what what the heck oh geez they shoot freezing bolts that's interesting that's a very cool mechanic actually I did not know that can I not can I not, no okay can I like do oh, all right well looks like I can't go back up that way can I restart this level or something oh did I just crouch whoa what is this can I use either I am... Whoa, okay. You can use up and down on the controller on the right stick to move left and right? I don't really understand how that happened, but sure. And then... Oh, no. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna leave. And then I'll try this level again, because I clearly botched it. Which I do like about this game, because you can... You can... You know, it's like a, it's like a level, like a, like a real dungeon. You mess it up, you can't really do much to, to get back, I guess. I don't know. Maybe that's interesting. I, I kind of feel like, I don't know, actually. That's a very interesting idea. Um, and I guess here we see it executed fairly well. I mean, the game has a pretty nice feel to it. I wish there was a little more depth to the combat. Uh, really that's my biggest concern though, and it's not, I don't think it's completely unfounded, but as, as it is at the moment, this, this fight is actually kind of cool. He's a little bit harder to kill, and you can't just kind of run into him and throw your axe and chop him to death. You actually have to kind of wait for his, his attack, you have to dodge it. And then you can attack him, which is cool. And then if you get abilities later on that lets you lets you set the pace of the battle, which is another cool, interesting mechanic as well. Oh, okay. Well, I found a key. Here's another one of these guys. They make little wind thingies. Oh, all right. I really want the like. I like the idea of every. Whoa, that guy's on the roof, and now he's super dead. Um, I really like the idea of being able to set the pace of the battle as as far as when you're fighting enemies and just in general when you're playing video games, but when an enemy is far more powerful than you are or when that's the narrative that the, a game is trying to build, that's definitely something you want to keep in mind is are you the one setting the pace of the battle? If so, are you powerful enough to do so? And in this case, our Viking guy has clearly established himself as being a super badass dude who can throw axes and chop people in half on the regular. So yeah, I think he's probably warranted the ability to set the pace of the battle. But if we are fighting something later on, which I will not currently spoil and I have yet to actually beat because it's kind of really difficult. Also. Even as a little tiny dude, I can still murder people, which might be kind of an interesting idea if you want to make it so that 
even as a tiny person, you, you feel um, maybe a lot more uh, vulnerable. That might be at least an interesting way to, to go about things. Oh, hello, Mr. Skelly Man. Well, we're just gonna murder the Jesus out of you. I like the way that they die. I want every single enemy to, to become a ragdoll. And just for fun, I would in the options menu allow people to, to leave ragdolls just kind of placed. That's just my own, definitely my own little thing. That's not something that if you are unpractical, it's not practical to do, then you definitely shouldn't ever force yourself into doing. But I think it'd be kind of interesting and kind of fun. And also you could go back and be like, yo, these dudes are dead. They're not. Also, the, the spawners might create an issue, but with spawners, you could be like, oh, well, since they're clones, they fade away or something. But I do really like this game so far. If there was, like, a block functionality, uh, that might... Then creating that... I mean, there's already a dodge, which I guess kind of counts as, as such, which definitely you'll see in, these, in this level for sure, because there's a lot of stuff that you have to dodge, you have to block, you have to... Well, not block... You have to dodge, you have to run around, be extra careful because you're probably going to fall off the edge and die if you don't. And uh, there's a lot of scary things that can murder the Jesus out of you if you're not paying attention properly. Um, and it's kind of weird. I feel like the dodge has its own place. But do you notice how you kind of keep glowing after you've dodged? Well, that's in this game... Uh, well, as it is right now, of course. I'm completely speaking from a game design sense. I'm not saying like, oh, this game is not good because this happens or whatever. I'm just speaking my mind and talking about the game in the current state. Um, at, when you're glowing, you're completely invincible. And that is very, very abundantly... Oh, fuck. That is very, very abundantly clear in a later on level, which I will talk about when I get there. Oh jeez, the rain is causing a, a large, uh, a lot of encoding weirdness to be going on in OBS, so hopefully that doesn't stay. I wish I could turn off the rain effects or something, but that's fine. The game does look nice, by the way. I, I, I like the art style. It feels... something about it just feels nice, but I feel like it could also use some refining. Um, Oh, but as I was saying, the roll actually takes the place of another semi-important feature, and that's dodging, because you're just invincible when you roll, and there are a couple frames outside of your roll where you're still glowing and you can't take damage still, which makes rolling kind of like a block, which that's not what rolling is. A roll is a dodge, obviously. Oh, fuck, man. I don't know how that happened, but whatever. I want to beat this level, but I don't like the high encoding that's going on right now. So I really wish I could just get through this level quickly. So let's just murder all these dudes. Damn it! Oh man. Man, the first time I went through this was very easy for me, but this time it's not as easy for me. I should stop going over to the, the right or left every single time because there's nothing over there. Um. But yeah, I, I found myself on, well, there's a, I'll just kind of spoil it a little bit. There, there's a boss fight at the end of this that you basically use your role as a block. And to me, I was like, I don't know how I like that. If it, it doesn't have to be like a continuous, well, can, no, you can't block. Okay. I just want to make sure I don't sound like an asshole for saying, oh, you should have a block and there's already a block or something. If it was a block that you have to time perfectly, I think it would work quite well. Uh, but as of right now, the roll, I, if it was mapped to a button, which it might be, but I don't like the fact that, I don't like any roll that is required, if it was, not LB, obviously, because that's, stop it. Okay, also the menus are a little bit strange to get through with the control. If it was mapped to, like, RB, instead of start. Like, the RB is open your pause menu, LB is start in your inventory, open your inventory. If open inventory was start and select, LB and RB were block and dodge, 
I think it would work a lot better and you could pull off a lot cooler stuff as well. Which is important, if that's what you're going for in this game. Um, because currently it's kind of hard to judge, and in any game it's hard to judge, when you double tap a direction, create, turn, using that as your, as your, you know, ability to block and dodge. Because those are not usually super reliable. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and buy... Do I have enough? No, I don't have enough. But I want this, the energy belt. We'll try it out. Last time I bought the Frost Axe... What? Oh, what happened? I didn't buy it, but that's fine. We're not even playing as Mr. Viking Man at the moment. We're playing as this lady. She is also a very cool character. Um, who uses dual swords. And has some really cool attacks as well. I, I like her. I like her character... Um, and also this owl is super overpowered, by the way. Definitely nerf the owl, or make him have a different functionality than just attacking, maybe? Um, yeah, also she doesn't have the ability to wall jump, which is interesting, which maybe hints at the, the, the nature that this is a dual game, so you're playing as two different characters who will each gain these abilities as they go. Because she can start with a double jump, which is interesting. I don't know what it is about these spawners, but something just works with me in the rhythm. Those guys are sometimes scary. But also, I think the one other thing that could use a little bit of revamping, if you want to revamp the combat in such a way that makes it a lot more satisfying to, to kill and attack enemies and fight enemies, while I really enjoy the, the, the ragdoll physics, make it a little harder to kill enemies. Obviously you can have some fodder or include more enemies to kill that are considered fodder. While this game is reasonably difficult, it's not its not at all impossible. Like I just killed Mr. Lizard Warrior taking one down, also I can't escape from there and I went the wrong way. But uh, I killed Mr. Lizard Warrior in a, like two or three hits and I know you're supposed to be relatively overpowered in this in this demo, but it makes the game literally almost too easy at the moment um one thing that can that can be done for sure is just well first of all having better enemy ai like having them not just charge at you and attack but having them maybe hang back maybe throw something at you that you can block or dodge not every enemy, obviously, and not all the time, but at the moment, their their AI is very easily cheesable. Like, I could just... Oh, well, I can't run into them, can I? Yeah, okay. That is interesting as well. I like the idea of it when games... I, can I restart? Yeah, okay, I can restart. I like the idea of it in games where you only take damage from enemies when they attack you, because it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense for them to hurt you when you're not being attacked by them, if you're just bouncing off of them and you're like, ow, 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 that's not... It's like someone bumping into you and you fucking are dying or something. It doesn't... It doesn't make sense to me, at least. I mean, of course, that's left up to the developer and what he feels is right, but... I... That's why I really enjoy it uh, when games make it so that it's... It's more of a challenge, obviously, and it's... It's a little bit of artificial difficulty when you make it so that enemies just hurt you by touching you. That makes it a little more gamey and it makes it it makes it so that you you are limited in the amount of things that you can do when you're faced with an enemy as well. There's a much higher skill ceiling, which is why I like games like Dark Souls, which I, I don't know, maybe this game is slightly inspired by. This, that's why games like Dark Souls and stuff allow you to to do cool things like backstabs and and having these epic boss fights where it seems like you're on a relatively fair playing field. Because if they were massive and had giant old uh, hitboxes that hurt you every time you touch them, then it'd be a lot more difficult to pull off anything that is relatively interesting. And, I mean, obviously that's left up to the discretion of whoever's making the game, but, but, um, I do think it adds a lot of skill ceiling for a game, and obviously certain games, it's, it's definitely not the case, certain games, um, 
can I like get up there? How do I get up there? What does this switch do? Maybe it switches that other area, maybe? I hope. Oh yeah, okay, it does. Um, obviously certain games, that is kind of their intent, but... What the heck, how do I... Can I... I want to kill that, that whatever. Um, certain games, that is definitely their intent to create this uh, difficulty or, or when enemies are just chasing you down or whatever. Obviously, that's kind of the point, is that they do damage to you. But, in a game like this, where you're, uh, it, there's a big focus on granular controlling and the ability to do damage to enemies and fight them on, on a level playing field and you, you feel like more of a badass, I feel there's a... Wait, did I not get everything? How, where was anything left? Whatever. Um, regardless, it, it feels like when you play this game you want to be able to pull those things off and it's not always possible and that to me is a little bit disappointing but i really do like this game so far uh let's see yeah all right let's go ahead i'll fight the the boss which is an interesting boss fight granted a very interesting boss fight but again this is where the the roles and stuff are much more heavily accentuated and is not it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Why do I use... What is my what is my ability? Oh! That's interesting. See, I can I can literally block his fire by rolling into it. And they la and the roll lasts a really long time as well. Which, to me, is a little, a little bit strange. But, okay, this is a good item for, for this boss, for sure. I need to be able to use it more often though, which kind of is the dickens. Can I use it again? Ah! Get out of here, you scumbag. Alright. Again, none of this is to say that this game is bad at all, because it's actually pretty awesome. And, uh, it's a testament to decently good game design because I can say this and not be like not feel bad about it because I actually think this game is pretty freaking good the way it is but there are a lot of things obviously length is one of those major things that could make this game better but also oh some of the things that I talked about with with enemy damage and and um also like if you you know don't take damage every time you touch the dragon would make a lot more sense as well. Like, touching a dragon shouldn't shouldn't damage you. Because I do feel like this game has a lot of awesome potential as far as combat goes, and I think it'd be hilarious to watch the, the, the dragon ragdoll out when I kill him, too. But that's just my... That is definitely my subjective and personal opinion. But most of the other stuff I talked about is generally stuff that uh, would just be a general help, I believe, anyway. Which is the point of subjectivity. But also, I, I really do think it'll help make the game a better experience. Definitely add as it is, the game has a ton of potential, though. I thought I could block him with my axe. Which also might be an interesting game mechanic, but uh, that's for another day. Anyway, thank you guys for joining me. If you enjoyed and you want to see more content like this and many other things, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash themarksman46, twitter.com slash marksman, and of course, I've been doing streams every Monday, Wednesday, Thursdays from 8 to 10 p.m. Pacific Standard Time um, of just random games. Isaac, I considered doing this game, but then I got a blue screen on my computer, and I lost everything. So then I just played a bunch of the games that I downloaded off of Steam, which took me the, the smallest amount of time possible when I definitely could have played a lot of other different games. But that's fine. Um, yeah, you can catch me live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash march46 for the Knights of the Stream Table with either Greg or Lemon and Crystal, but always Crystal and me for sure. Anyway, thank you guys, and as always, stay frosty.